internal and external validity. These terms pop up all the time in research methods courses, but what do they actually mean? If you've ever wondered how to tell whether a study is truly solid or just looks good on paper, you're in the right place. In this video, we're cutting through the jargon and getting to the heart of what internal and external validity really mean. Clearly explained, with examples that actually make sense. So whether you're working on a research project or just trying to wrap your head around these concepts for an exam, let's break it down together. And now, without further ado, welcome to Shrive. What was validity again? Exactly, it's one of the three quality criteria used to assess the rigor of scientific studies. Validity answers the question, how well does a method measure what it is supposed to measure? Or put differently, can I answer my research question using this approach? In another video, I've already given a general overview of the three quality criteria, objectivity, reliability and validity. But to clarify what validity means, here's a simple example. Imagine you step on the scale every morning to check your body weight. However, the scale is off by two kilograms every time. Maybe it wasn't calibrated properly or there's a defect in the sensor. Either way, the numbers aren't accurate. It provides consistent readings, so it's reliable, but because it doesn't show your true weight, it lacks validity. The question of validity mainly comes up in quantitative research. Within this context, the characteristics of validity have been refined over time. In general, we distinguish between internal and external validity. Let's start with internal validity. This refers to how confidently researchers can draw causal conclusions from their study results. The most cited work here is the classic experimental and quasi-experimental designs for research by Campbell and Stanley. Since experiments are considered the gold standard for testing cause and effect relationships, internal validity plays a central role. So what exactly are we testing in an experiment? Usually the causal link between an independent variable and a dependent variable. We've got internal validity when we can confidently say that changes in the independent variable caused changes in the dependent one. But how do we know that? Well, mainly by ruling out other explanations. Are there any outside factors that might have influenced the results? Anything that could have caused the change even without us manipulating the independent variable? In other words, are there any confounding variables that muddy the waters? Here's an example. Let's say we run an experiment where we adjust the temperature inside a car and ask people how comfortable they feel. Temperature is our independent variable. Comfort is the dependent one. Now if the car's seat massage function is on, that's a problem. People might feel more comfortable, not because it's warm, but because they're getting a massage. That doesn't mean temperature has no effect, but it makes it harder to isolate. So internal validity is all about reducing or eliminating the influence of confounding variables. Before we dive into the next part, don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe if you're enjoying the content. It really helps me out a lot. Once we've established internal validity, we can think about the next big piece, external validity. This is about whether the results of a study can be transferred to other contexts, like different people, different places, or different points in time. Put simply, external validity is about generalizability, and it's not just important in experiments. Survey research also relies on external validity, because generalizing the results is often the whole point. So, how do we make sure our results are generalizable? Again, it's about minimizing threats. And in this case, one of the big ones is sampling bias. If the sample is skewed in some way, for example, if people were pressured to participate or if the group doesn't represent the broader population, that's a threat to external validity. Now let's talk qualitative research. Things work a little differently here. In quantitative research, internal validity is the top priority. In qualitative research, it's basically off the table. Why? Because we're not testing causal relationships. So internal validity isn't relevant in this context. External validity though, that can still matter. 
especially if you are trying to generalize your findings to a broader group and your sample was selected at random. Here's a quick example. Say you're doing a content analysis of YouTube videos. You select 100 videos from a larger pool of 1000. You might wonder, do the findings from those 100 apply to the other 900? Now in qualitative studies, generalization in that statistical sense usually isn't the goal. But where external validity does matter is when we are generalizing to other contexts or situations. That's often a key aim of qualitative research. Take grounded theory, for instance. The goal is to develop theoretical concepts and figure out how they relate to one another based on your empirical data. And those concepts should ideally apply to more than just your specific case. So, whether you're conducting a tightly controlled experiment or building theory from qualitative data, one thing remains clear. Thinking carefully about internal and external validity helps you design better studies and draw more meaningful conclusions. Because in the end, good research isn't just about collecting data. It's about making sure that data actually tells us something we can trust and maybe even use beyond the study itself.